All right, I'm going to sum up now. Basically, I take full responsibility for putting myself in this environment. I'm not here to complain about the conditions at all. I was a couple of years older than you guys when I first chose to do the ecstasy pill and I kept choosing to do drugs and that's what put me further and further down the road to here. When I first started doing drugs, I thought it was the funnest, coolest thing in the world. I wouldn't listen to any adults back then. I was invincible. That's how it starts out. Well, but what happens is over time, you damage your brain, you enlarge in your heart, you go through phases like paranoia, you got to do more drugs to keep the high going. And it ends up in a possible range of bad things. Drugs started out as fun for the head of my security team, Cody Bates. He lost his mind on drugs by the time he was in his 20s. His parents sent him to rehab and he hung himself. Drugs started out fun for the woman I married out there. She was one of the most glamorous women in the rave scene. She lost her mind on drugs by the time she was in her 20s. She wanted to die in Egypt. She wanted to get bitten by a snake and die like Cleopatra. She bought a one-way ticket to Egypt. She couldn't get a snake, so in a hotel room, she made a weapon out of a Mark III razor, took a bunch of prescription pills and slashed her wrists. Drugs started out as fun for another one of my security guys, Big Micah. Big Micah didn't get arrested with us and he continued to do drugs and I got a message from his girlfriend on MySpace last year saying Big Mike is in hospital and he needs a new heart as a consequence of his drug taking or else he's going to die. And he's only in his 30s, so you never know what's going to happen next. I was in five car crashes, came out of a rave high, went through a red light, plowed into a bunch of vehicles, put people in hospital. I wasn't even injured, my sports car was crunched, but I should have died that day. So I'm lucky to even be here and able to speak to you about these things. Something else you've got to think about is the effect on your family members. Here's a picture of my mum visiting me in the prison system. And these are the orange outfits that you were. Now basically all my money and assets were seized. So when I got kicked out of America and banned for life from there now by the Department of Homeland Security, I was back living with my mum and on the dole just trying to rebuild my life. Thank goodness, you know, she took me back in. A lot of people I met who've been in trouble with drugs. The families are disowned because they've been in repeated trouble. No firm in their right mind would give me a job. It says on my criminal record that I'm involved in ecstasy dealing. Now, if you've got years invested in education like you guys have, and you're going to go on to uni, and you've got brilliant careers ahead of you, you can't even afford to have something on your criminal record that you may consider lesser than what I did, such as smoking pot or drunk driving. Because when you go for that job interview, it's going to show up, especially in this economic environment. There's just no way they're going to give you the job. They're going to give it to the next person. Now, I was 5,000 miles away from my mum when I was getting my party friends high. I wasn't thinking of her, but I should have been. I didn't think she would ever find out. And then two months after my arrest, I was the cover story of a newspaper out of Phoenix. They had a portrait of me on the front page Looking like Nosferatu, pointy ears, Batman t-shirt, bunch of ravers dancing behind me in like a strobe lit inferno. English Sean's evil empire. The article was 10 pages long. It was everything I ever done and 10 times more. They portrayed me to be a cross between Tony Soprano and a vampire. So I read this and I'm thinking, my mum's not got to see this, my mum and dad. They're just gentle loving people, it's going to break their hearts. I call my aunt, don't let my parents see this. It's too late, there's an internet version. So my mum read it and she went into the college that day and there was a group of foreign students and she ran up to them. I know you've read the article, I know you've read the article. They didn't have a clue what she was on about. She was having a nervous breakdown. My dad had to go and collect her from the college and she's been on and off medication to this day and that's something that I've got to live with for the rest of my life. You know, I still see the hurt in their faces that have caused them. And it's, it's my biggest regret out of the whole thing. So you've seriously got to think about your parents and pray that they're going to be there for you at the end of the day if you do get in trouble. Now, I've got this risk-taking personality type, and I discussed this with the shrink in the prison. And he, he told me the key to dealing with, if you've got this naughty risk-taking personality type, this is, which is why I was attracted to the stock market, which is like gambling and the party scene and all this stuff, he said, if you've got that naughty, risk-taking personality type, the way to deal with it is to view it as just energy. You can take that energy 
And you can put it into these negative addictions, which is what I was doing, which can lead to you getting into trouble. Or you can take that same energy and you can put it into positive addictions that won't get you in trouble. I still hear the wolves howling for me to come out and party. What I'll do now is I'll go to the gym, I'll do karate sparring, and I'll come out on a natural high, and that's not going to get me in trouble. Or I'll go to the gym and I'll jump around with 60 women in a mirrored room to thumping dance music at one of these aerobics classes like body combat. <laughs> and again, that's like the closest thing for an old school raver who doesn't want to do drugs. Like, I'll come out on a natural high. Now, I'm sure you guys have got your own individual interests that are not necessarily the same as mine. But if you've got that naughty, risk-taking personality type, and you think you might get in trouble from it down the road, you've just got to look at what your positive interests are, take that same energy and put it into those. I'll give you an extreme example. Say you're a lad who likes going to the pub, punching strangers in the face and getting into fights. How could you possibly turn that around? You could take that energy, you could put it into mixed martial arts, you could put it into boxing, and at the end of the day, you could win prizes for that instead of getting arrested and getting a criminal record that's going to go on to spoil your future career prospects. Now before I finish, I'm just going to read a paragraph to you of advice that was given to me by a man called Two Tonys that I met in prison. He's an Italian mafia mass murderer. He left dead bodies from Tucson to Alaska but claimed all his victims had it coming because they were rival gangsters. He didn't see anything wrong with that. He was serving 112 years. He was on America's Most Wanted at one point because he went on the run. And I grew close to him because I was putting his stories on the internet. And this is what he said to me just before I got out. Listen, Sean, I like you. You're a nice guy. The cards turned on you and you wound up in this hellhole. Not because you're bad or evil, but because you made bad decisions due to taking drugs. Get out of here and just don't take them anymore. Stay the hell away from them. It's that simple. You could spend all the money in the world on shrinks, drug counsellors, and 30 grand a month rehabs. But the bottom line is, like Nancy Reagan said, you've just got to say no. Anyway, that is my story. So thank you for listening.